Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Dave, and we're the IB English Guys. Today we're going to continue our discussion of photography, and we're going to look at an incredible body of work by a Welsh photojournalist named Philip Jones Griffiths. He's an incredible photographer, took photographs during the Vietnam War, took photographs in the Iraq War, and also went to Northern Ireland, and his work spans 50 years. He's incredible. Mr. Giles, I know you're excited, but let me give a quick preview for today. Folks, first of all, we're going to review the mnemonic from the last video. Uh, and then we're going to introduce you to three photos by Philip Jones Griffiths and we will conclude by discussing these photos and thinking about what is the commonality throughout the body of work. Awesome, okay, here we go. So we have a, uh, a mnemonic we use to, to talk about features of photographs, and we'd like to just remind you of what that is. The mnemonic goes like this, colorful fruits like cherries pack good flavor. What does the C stand for, Mr. Cohen? Mr. Giles, the C stands for composition. Of course, we're thinking about the rule of thirds, we're thinking about leading lines, and we're thinking about vectors when we consider composition. Yeah, the F stands for focus. We wanna think about depth of field, what's in focus, what's blurry, what's out of focus, where's our eye drawn. This is good to talk about. Yeah, for the L, of course, stands for lighting. We wanna think about where is the image light? Where is it dark? Is it sunrise? Is it sunset? We wanna think about the implications of light in our photographs. Yeah, C stands for color, and we can think about shading. If it's black and white, we wanna think about the significance of that, or if there's particular colors and what kind of emotions those colors evoke. Yeah, the P stands for people and places. If we have people in our image, we wanna think about who are they? What social class do they come from? What's their context? Of course, where are they? What country are they in? Is it a rural area or an urban area? Lots of questions to ask about people and places. Great. G is one of my favorite gaze. We want to think about the people in this image and what they're looking at. What are they viewing? Can we can we determine that? Are they looking at each other? Are they looking in the distance? Again, gaze is good to talk about. And the final F, of course, stands for framing or, or cropping. We want to think about how is that image framed? Did they crop some and leave it behind? Uh, why has the photographer made that choice in post-production and what is the intended effect? Okay, so these photographs are all from one, uh, one exhibition called Vietnam Inc. These were taken, this was published in 1971 during the Vietnam War. I just wanna add first that these images and this collection of hundreds of photographs changed the world's perception of the Vietnam War. That's so right, Mr. Giles. They were able to get a close look inside and really see the faces of the Vietnamese people. They could see what was happening on the ground and, and get a different angle on the war that the media typically didn't show. So we're gonna show you three photographs and just briefly um, talk about some of the different aspects we see. So let's look at image number one. What is something that you notice in image number one? Mr. Giles, the first thing I notice is the composition. It's very intentionally framed and formed. Uh, it's almost a triangular position in the middle uh, between the three soldiers and sort of the base of that triangle is where we see this really light part of the frame where we, where we zero in and my focal point goes right to the face uh, of this injured Vietnamese man. What's yeah. something that you notice, Mr. Giles? Well, I'm thinking about the people and the people of the image. We want to think about these soldiers. I, I'm really struck by their posture. They're both kneeling. They're the, all three of them are kneeling. They're caring for this victim of war. Again, we don't know all the details of this victim of war. They're obviously, you know, hold, cradling his head, giving him water, and they're not holding their guns in any kind of threatening position. And their gaze is directly, all three of them are gazing at the man who's the victim, which is making me gaze at the man. Right? That's right. And sadly, the man, while they're gazing at the man, the man is sort of gazing up at the heavens. He's, his eyes are almost closed. His mouth is agape. He's not doing well, and we wonder if these soldiers can save him. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so let's go on to the next image. Again, these are just our first impressions. This is a really interesting image. I'm I'm struck immediately, again, looking at the composition, we see the leading lines and all the rule of thirds directed right at this young, tiny boy who's dressed in these fatigues and these ill-fitting clothes. This is what our eye is directed to. Yeah, and Mr. Giles, I can't help but notice the difference between the foreground and the background. Of course, the place is more urban this time, but in the foreground, we see this young boy gazing off to the left but in the background we see this this vehicle and if you look carefully it has the Red Cross emblem on it so almost this notion of the soldiers are going one way and the Red Cross is going another way taking behind casualties and taking behind victims it's a really stark juxtaposition this boy does not belong in this frame. yeah that's right and the, the, again thinking about the P I'm going to talk about the gaze again but the P and the boy we could talk a lot about um, about that we can even look at the camera angle being a high angle shot looking down at him makes him kind of vulnerable 
And again, this vulnerability is what really strikes me in the image. And his gaze looking off into the distance with a very fearful expression, this is really making me feel all kinds Sorry, of Sorry, last comment. I can't help but talk about this as well. You're talking about the perspective, that high angle. Well, when you're at that high angle, for me, Mr. Giles, that actually accentuates the size of his boots. Yeah. And you see that contrast between these almost stick-like legs. It's just so unnatural. This boy is swimming in his helmet. He's swimming in his boots. Uh, and again, it's just such an unnatural setting. It really makes you think about the casualties One thing to keep in mind is that Philip Jones Griffiths probably took 150 photographs of this young boy, but he chose this photograph to publish. We have to remember that. Okay, let's go into our third image. This is a great image. I think it shows a really different um, his range of this humanity and horror that is in like his that, collection. The humanity and the horror. And speaking of the humanity, what's something you see in this image that indicates humanity, Mr. Giles? Well, I'm immediately struck by the, the again, the composition, the leading lines. Everything's drawing my attention to the young girl um, in the image, but also that soldier that's that's looking at her. And this is again showing that that connection between this young girl. Uh, wearing the conical hat and again gazing up at this soldier who's really ill-fitting in this environment. He is ill-fitting, Mr. Giles, and of course this is a black and white image, but thinking about color, black and white, you know, the children in this image, they're wearing white. Of course that could represent innocence, that could represent purity, and of course the soldier is sort of a dark, sinister color. He's in his military fatigues. Again, it sort of shows that dichotomy between the aggressor and the bystander. I think it's interesting too, just like the framing of, of the image and the cropping of the image. Um, again, this is interesting. It's more of a wide angle shot. So Philip Jones Griffiths decided to incorporate, I think the, the, the water buffalo in that image is really important to me. I think this is an iconic image of Vietnam, but this is a very rural setting. And again, it's a very agricultural farming nation. And again, that's in juxtaposition of this man with the, with the gun. Right? Can, I, can I say one more thing? Sure. Sorry. I love photography, Mr. Giles, as you know, I love to travel and take photographs. And one thing I think about, and I can tell Philip Jones Griffith has thought about it as well, is he's got those layers in the background. If you notice the layering in the photo, there's three layers. We have the sky, we have the mountains, and in the foreground we have the land. And I think those three clear divisions really add a sense of structure and a sense of purpose, and they really frame the image nicely. Yeah, it's a really beautiful image. It's really evocative. It shows also Philip Jones Griffiths had an appreciation for Vietnam, the country, and well, the people. And I think that's sort of where we're going with all this, Mr. Giles. And now, folks, in the class, we rarely look at just one image. We like to think about bodies of work. So if we're to look at these three images, Mr. Giles, we want to think about the body of work of Philip Jones Griffiths what are some commonalities we see throughout the body of work? Well, when I read about him, I, I thought about this idea of the, the horror and humanity that's depicted. He has such a range of different um, emotions and, and ideas and the horror of war. He's clearly not pulling any punches with some of his images. He's got many images that are quite graphic, but again, he's also showing the humanity and it's the humanity of the Vietnamese people and it's also the humanity of the of the soldiers that are at war. I yeah. think that is powerful. And you have this stark difference between you know the horrors and the humanity. Well, typically that'll match up with the black and the white of the image as well. We notice that these pockets of humanity are accentuated, sometimes by light, sometimes by black, but we can see that stark contrast and the stark dichotomy between horrors and, and between humanity when we look at his use of black and white yeah. uh, in these images. That's great. What are some other things you notice, John? I think camera position and camera angle is very carefully um, um, you know, he's really thinking about the, the angle of the, of the camera, of the picture and how it's taken. He's also thinking about how things are cropped and framed. I think all those things help to tell the story. Yeah, and typically in his stories, we see many women and we see many children. And I think if you want to show the horrors of war and the humanity in terms of taking care of these people, what better subject than a woman or a child? Typically, these resonate with the viewer. They pull powerful emotions of sympathy and sadness. And I think if he really wanted people to empathize with the Vietnamese population, using women and children as subjects certainly was the right choice. Yeah, I have to say, looking over Philip Jones Griffith's work is, is I think it's so powerful. It has so many emotional responses when I was looking at it that I had, that I'm so excited to introduce this in my class. I think also we have his body of work spans hundreds of photographs just in the Vietnam War itself. 
And to think about like that richness and that complexity, um, really it make for a great text to deconstruct. Yeah. No but, language. No language, Mr. Giles. And uh, typically I'd like to have language and image yeah, together, but, but there's a lot in these photographs to talk about. It's okay. And I think there's a lot to say, but you need the terminology that colorful fruits like cherries pack good flavor. We need to use the terminology to deconstruct his images Indeed. to do it justice. Folks, in closing, we really wanted to make this video to show you not only how to talk about a singular photo, but to talk about how we examine bodies of work. Of course, you can look at one image in isolation, but when you start to see multiple images, you can deduce what are the patterns we see there and what can we say about the body of work with respect to theme and message. Well, Giles, send us off. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed. Let us know in the comments of things you'd like to see more. Again, we're working hard to, to create good documents that can be really helpful for you to follow up on what you see. Thanks so much for viewing. We, we really appreciate it, and we hope we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.